Um, so delighted to present tonight um, in conversation with artist Nikki Bird. Nikki, welcome. Hi there. So uh, this is this is the first of a slightly different series of online events insofar as um, we are actually finally open physically at street level. So we're able to welcome audiences back to the gallery for Nikki's exhibition Legacy. Um, still with a few restrictions in Glasgow. So we're continuing with this blended model uh, of online talks. So delighted to be joined uh, by Nikki Bird this evening um, and Dr. Annabella Pollan. Hi, Annabella. Hi, everyone. Um, um, we are gonna, they are gonna be uh, discussing the themes um, within Nikki's ex exhibition legacy. As I said, that's open to visitors in the real world at street level until the 6th of June. We also have an online virtual exhibition tour and Nikki gave us a fantastic online um, talk, walk and talk of the uh, preview of the exhibition as well previously. So if you haven't experienced any of those delights, please do catch up on them. Um, but for this evening's event, um, I just say very briefly and I keep it short so we can get to the good stuff. Uh, Dr. Annabelle Pollan is an academic um, working across a range of interests in material and visual culture. Her research areas include mass photography, popular image culture and histories of art, craft, design and dress, especially in relation to marginal and alternative visual and material forms. She's published several books which include Mass Photography, Collective History, Histories of Everyday Life, which was published in 2015. It's an amazing, amazing book. I recommend anybody that hasn't, hasn't experienced that. Also, Photography Reframed, New Visions in Contemporary Photographic Culture, published in 2018, and very recently published chapters in the Handbook of Photography Studies, The Companion to Photography, and Photography Off the Scale. All those are published last year. Um, she is a reader in history of art and design at the University of Brighton. So thank you very much for agreeing to take part with this uh, for this event tonight, Annabella. Um, and just to say thanks, especially because you're actually on the road there uh, on a research trip. So it's really good of you to risk hotel Wi-Fi. <laughs> OK, so um, getting on to Nikki. Nikki is a reader in contemporary photographic practice at the Glasgow School of Art. And for over the last 15 years, she's examined the themes of land, heritage, personal and social memory through a collaborative photographic practice. Um, from, the, from the minigraph that accompanies the exhibition at street level, Nikki says, my work contains the reoccurring, thank you very much, <laughs> reoccurring themes of history, memory, people and place. Legacy asks, what will you remember and who gets to create the history? Um, the show on at street level includes new work and also brings together several of her site-specific projects for the first time, especially reimagined for street level. And it, the work largely focuses on Scotland's rural and small town communities. Nikki considers contemporary relevances of found photographs and latent histories of specific sites, investigating how they remain resonant. Her work incorporates new photography, oral histories, in collaborations with people who have significant connections to the original site and its photographic archive. Alongside commission projects, she has exhibited nationally and internationally and published essays on themes of erased place and digital exchange of photographs. She has a range of fantastic publications um, over the years, um, including Beneath the Surface Hidden Place, Ghosting the Castle and Tracing Echoes. Those three publications can still be purchased online at the street level shop. So do check them out. Without any more from me, I'm gonna um, hand over to Nikki and Annabella. And just to say that um, we're in a Zoom, so we're not able to connect with you directly as an audience, but obviously we're being live streamed to Facebook and we really do want to open up for conversation. There'll be a conversation between Nikki and Annabella for about half an hour. And then we'd like to in, um, field uh, questions and comments from you, the audience. So please do pop your uh, questions in the Facebook chat and you can do that 
as we're talking, as it occurs to you, as, as we go along. And John, reliably behind the scenes, will field those questions through to Zoom for us. Okay, thanks very much, Nikki. take it away. All right, will do. <laughs> I'm just gonna share the screen as a backdrop. Okay. Um, well, it's uh, it, it's really great to be here in conversation with Bella, and also thanks to everybody who's kind of uh, you know just hang on in there while we've sorted out. Uh, well, I should say John sorted out the technical side of uh, of things here, and. Um, uh, I'm, I'm really pleased to be able to have this in conversation and also Bella and I would just like to re-emphasize what Isolts just said that we really do want to, 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 to be able to engage with, um, uh, with yourselves and with your shared interests as well so do you know do, do make use of the, uh, of the, uh, of the comment box. Um, and what we're going to do is um, we, we've, we've got a number of um, visuals which are from the combination from the exhibition, some details, and it's really not as a presentation, but as a, as a backdrop and a guide to our, our kind of conversation, our dialogue that we're going to have together. Um, um, so, so the pictures will move through and, and they really are to, to, to aid us to have this conversation. And the reason why I'm so pleased to be able to have um, this dialogue with Bella is that, um, as has been indicated in her biography, her sorts of sets of interests, and but also these kind of questions about, okay, what is peripheral, what is vernacular, um, uh, and, and uh, what is marginal, um, but also attending to those things and actually um, attending to the importance of these. And of course, for me, um, as a, a as a photographer and artist, it's uh, I've I've been really interested in in, in all kinds of, of photographies, but also people's connections to to particular photographs and this kind of uh, questions of place and so forth. So so I think we'll, we'll we'll kind of move through the images. We'll keep an eye on the time because we do want to have the 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 the, the you know the, the kind of dialogue with the wider audience as well. Um, and um, so perhaps we probably would would probably start by. It's kind of um, you know why the we, we obviously did um, the mini graph some time ago, which was in in response to um, Bella me sending you a kind of series of publications and books, but that was without the context of the show, um, and and I'm really yeah. pleased that you've actually managed to have an encounter with the show. Um, and this is kind of what we're kind of going to sort of move on a bit from our kind of mini graph conversation, but to talk about some of the experience of actually being in the show itself and those kinds of questions and, um, uh, and, uh, and kind of thoughts that have come up in your mind in response to this. Yeah, really pleased to be here. Thank you for inviting me, Nikki. And this is a continuation of the conversation that we've been having about some of our shared interests and specifically about um, the themes of your work for that essay in the minigraph that accompanies the exhibition. Um, but as you say, a lot of that was about your published work, your written work and the other forms that you've, that work has taken. So it was, um, it was revelatory for me to see the exhibition because um, I understood it in a different way. I understood your work in a different way. And one of the things that we'll talk about today, I hope, is the curatorial yeah. strategies that yeah. you applied to the exhibition and how you brought certain themes to life kind of spatially and materially in the, um, in the gallery. But first, um, the, this title that we gave to the essay, Shifting Photographic Grounds, and which we've given to the event this evening, I think it might need a bit of yes. explanation. That is something that we sort of concocted between the two of us as a result of those conversations. I don't know if you would like to speak about how it sort of what you understand it to mean. It's now become, uh, I notice in the gallery, it's one of the sort of texts, titles, subtitles on the wall of the gallery too. Yeah, I I, I think that um, that phrase, um, yeah, emerges kind of being very um, useful encapsulation of, of, of a number of things. And first of all, is the question of photography as evidence. Um, there's the photography about, uh, about what is visualized. Um, there's also what the original meaning and purpose of a photograph might be and how um, in conversation with somebody else, the significance of the picture shifts and the meaning shifts. Um, but it's also the, um, the photographic qualities of what's in the foreground, what's in the background, 
what what you know what one person will look at and another person it, it, it kind of passes them by um, so so it's that kind of kind of movement um, and yeah. um, and and the different positions that could be in that and the way that yeah people can look at look at a photograph and see different things but they can also other sets can see different kinds of shared shared points of of interest or narratives or something will spark off another kind of story in relation to in, in relation to a, a photograph and um, so as a practice I, 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 I've come quite attached to that <laughs> phrase now shifting photographic grounds and particularly how a voice can shift um, the way that we might see a, a photograph that we think is really quite so-called ordinary yeah, that's really interesting. When I went to your exhibition, um, the, that sort of term gained a bit of new meaning for me. And uh, yeah, it's this particular area of the gallery, what you've called sites of personal archaeology. And it's particularly that image that's on the far left of the display, which I'd love you to zoom in on. And perhaps we could talk about briefly. You can you can explain a bit more about this image. but. Um, I was really struck by this image. It's, it's a fantastic image for loads of reasons. I find it quite, um, I find it quite moving. It's a very personal image, obviously, a family photo um, that everything from the sort of slightly shrunken or outgrown jumpers that speak very personally of a particular kind of childhood and a particular kind of um, way of living. But it was the spatial elements of this photograph, especially as you've enlarged it in the gallery and you know sort of blown it up. Um, I suppose if I'm thinking about it as a sort of with a kind of art historian set of specs on, it's the kind of the picture planes that I think are really interesting, the spatial dimensions of the photograph, as well as its personal and evocative quality um of a place that is past so you've got these people in the foreground then you've got the washing in the sort of mid ground yeah. and then behind that the housing and the industry and it's got these kind of layers and it struck me that in quite a lot of your photographic work you're moving those layers around you're literally shifting things that are in the background yeah. into the foreground or you're doing that overlaying technique creatively and making these images sort of transparent so you can see things behind them and through them um, maybe you could explain a bit more about the context of this photograph and how you put it to use. Yes, I mean, some people might have heard me talk about this before because it's a really pivotal image in, um, in, in this kind of body of work that I've been looking at um, and put together for the street level show. Um, and also, hopefully, what uh, everyone can see quite clearly that this is a very handled image. This is an image that's, uh, you know, not not just been put in a mount and and not touched and handled. So it's got that, it's got that other kind of tactility, that other sense of um, being passed around, um, you know, being knocked about, and and uh, uh, but in a in that kind of. Um, where it's got that sense of intimacy, and and then there's another level of importance to, to to a photograph that's been handled. Um, so so looking at this photograph of which the photographer is unidentified, um, we uh, and it, the photograph is of John Yeoman and his brother. And John Yeoman I met um, as a man in his seventies, and, and we were on this community archaeology project. Um, and I have talked about this in in um, beneath the surface, but also talked about this in the kind of the live the live kind of tour as this sort of kind of key image. But I think what was really important about it is 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 obviously my encounter with the his image, uh, with him holding it in his hand, and eventually it was a scanned image to be kind of uh, as part of an archaeology project explaining what's happened to a particular site and its changes. It, is that by looking at that it was the kind of question of what what would happen if you could work closely with somebody in their picture and the place that, that's changed what 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 would what would happen both aesthetically and practically as well as kind of ideas wise um and that's when um you can be really you can if you're thinking about shifting your own position as a photographer or, or artist whatever term you want to use uh and you're working with somebody else you have to you have to shift your shift your positions around and have a different way of looking but also a different way of listening and looking at a, a, a physical landscape uh before you actually do anything and try and 
you're almost trying to inhabit this, the, the vision that somebody else has or their knowledge of a place has. And of course, there's a certain possibility about that when you don't share the experience. But it's an interesting challenge about how do you share that and what happens if you do attempt to shift positions, you know, whether that's the kind of, you know, um, photographer model, you know, photographer sitter, a, a kind of attempt to kind of break down those positions a little bit and what can, what can come out of that. I don't know if that kind of ex expands that a bit more. Yeah, I think your um, your particular sort of working process of listening to people, and in fact, we were going to call the um, the title of the essay "Listening to Photographs," weren't we? Yeah, yeah. That idea of the artist as listening post that you phrased in a in a previous um, piece of writing that you did, I think, is a really important part of the practice. But also, the work that you do with that raw material. Yeah. Um, is really important too. So the layering and the moving, as you say, um, as you've said, maybe we'd move to another image yeah. because um, I know that this is another really good example, actually, of um, the way that you've got an eye for selecting an image that's got all sorts of layers and stories in it. And this is a good one, I think, as well, for showing how you work with an image and what you do with it. So um, I'll leave you shortly to talk <laughs> about the context for the decorators, which you know much more about than I do. Yeah. Um, in terms of the image that you've taken here, which was an image, I believe, of some workers in this particular um, ceramics manufactory and um, the decorators of the ceramics from that manufactory. Um, so they're photographed outside of the factory and inside you can see um, another either employer or another yeah. employee, yeah. somebody who's in the workplace sort of one step behind and then behind that again you can see the ceramics themselves and what you've done with this image is sort of you know firstly enlarged it but you've put it back in situ and then amazingly these two decorators pictured in it are standing in front of it so this yeah. kind of sense of this the multiple layers of time and the kind of um the conversations that happen between you and your the participants and you and the photographers and you and the people who own those photographs and the place they're all kind of stacked up there i think yeah. really obviously yeah and also just to kind of come in here that, that this photograph is another really interesting example because this is not the picture that we're looking at now here on screen it was taken by my my you know friend and also she, she's a photographer an artist in her own right Susanna Ramsentiles who happened to come along to 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 this event and um so uh, so again you know in the exhibition Who's where well, I know who's taken the photograph. You know, it's very important to kind of credit that and 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 to capture that moment because often when I'm on site in this way, if I am talking and you know looking at things with people, that's what I'm trying to concentrate on. So I've been really lucky with that. I've had some some really good kind of friends uh, who are involved with their own practice, um, uh, like Susanna and also Alicia Bruce is another one who've kind of been there <laughs> kind of cataloguing some of these things that happen very, you know, you can't predict that these are happening because they just happen to turn up at, at this event. Um, so yes, the billboard uh, kind of image behind them, um, which was again from a kind of small, a much smaller photograph um, by Maria, Fult Fortuna, Maria Fortuna, uh, who was the decorator I worked closely with at the beginning of this project. So this is her image and, and, uh, and, and kind of placing it near the site of where, the, where these women worked. And of course, um, you've got this kind of cross generation of women working, um, but the women that, that I eventually was meeting with and talking with and looking at their pictures and work on, on site, were all, were all working there um, when they were in their teens. And that was really interesting to me as well of, of, of this kind of um, teenage work, which had, had made a very, um, uh, a kind of indelible impression, but then being working with these kinds of ceramics that now kind of you know you can go in the sort of charity shops and things like that, um, and there and each uh, one is individually painted with a sign of a decorator of a particular, you know, of a particular decorator. So it, 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 it's again how the personal photographs bring a site to life that has another purpose now, which is, which is still has the two, two kilns there, but it's, 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 it's surrounded by residential, residential flats, but there's this 
interesting history within living memory that's still lurking there. Well, that's yeah, what I'm trying to draw out. Sorry to interrupt yeah. there. Um, I was just going to say the site specific nature of that is that project is obviously a lot of its power. The original project is about that place, and you've worked with people who um, were located in that place as employees and the display of the image is on the very site. So then how do you translate that into the gallery? So I think you did something really interesting here in your display. Uh, perhaps you can look at an image of how you um, created an installation in the exhibition. Um, well, yes, yeah, so that, I mean, also Bella, that will kind of come later as well. So um, it may be good if we, we were looking at kind of some sort of like the surface details but if we could pick up that kind of question of how you have a site-specific work mm. and how does it then translate it to um into street in, into street level um i'm going to come on to that when we come on to mm. also how do you how do you have an exhibition and install an exhibition during the kind of period of time that we we've been in yeah but I, so i wonder if i could move on to um, when we're talking onto this kind of areas of um, particularities of this display, and this is a detail of the vitrine that we're talking about, um, that uh, so, so we have um, uh, Karen and Linda, both their kind of present and, and, and future selves, so who, who uh, uh, arrived to see that, that, that billboard image at the time. And then we've got the sense of the kind of um, uh, family, you know, family and personal photographs of um, of, of, of three de de decorators, including Mary Fortuna, um, Barbara, and um, Irene, um, and um, so so surrounded by an example of what they made. And so I was trying to think how would how would you get a sense of of again the different uses of photography? We've got. Um, the starting point uh, through to this kind of image being on the side of uh, of now a, a block of flats, but also the photographs of the kind of the, the original kind of ceramic uh, kind of wares, the catalogues, um, and then the way that uh, people would turn over the, the vase and take take a picture of the sign and say, say send it to me, or I would photograph it uh, myself, uh, combined with these these pictures of the time of a, of a working working and social life of, of, of a particular group. So that's that shows you that detail. And then later on, we'll see that uh, the, the, the whole the whole spread and kind of again coming back to that question of, of what's the challenge between translating something from the site and the location, a series of events where it is very, it's very animated in that way uh, at that point to when it comes into the, to, a, to a gallery setting and how do you try and um, communicate that to an audience, but also allow them to do their own kind of detective work and looking and some things will speak to them and other things maybe not so much, mm. but it's trying, to, it's trying to create that space for the viewer in the gallery. This particular display really spoke to me because I am really interested, as we both are, in the sort of materiality um, of photography. You talked already about the well-handled photograph and the sort of the dinks and the chips and the bends and the folds in that um, John Yeoman photograph. Yeah. But I really like the way that you brought together the actual ceramics and the sort of catalogue ephemera commercial photography, and you layered it in a way that was more like a sort of social history museum display than yeah. perhaps you might find in a conventional gallery. And I really thought that was um, really intriguing and innovative. You have got that um, phrase, we are social history, which I think yeah. is a participant in another project yeah. who was making a very different point about how, um, you know, the voices of ordinary people need to be remembered when history is, is written. But I thought um, you were using sort of social history sort of museological display strategies here in a way that was um i found very appealing in particular shall we move on and have yeah. a look at another one of the many excellent <laughs> projects now this one would be a great one to talk about um, yes. this is the voice activated sound in the gallery i'll let you say a bit more about it yes yeah so uh, so again this postcard here of westwood house um so <laughs> Again, this is kind of really interesting, and perhaps what we'll do is, we, first of all, if we look at it as together, and you know, together as the audience, and and each each 
each of us will look at this and it will either be oh it's a you know it's a grand it's a grand house um, it's or it's a postcard of an old house so what it's all those kinds of different things in the mix and what I'm going to do now is just play a very small extract um, from Isabella Mason Kirk talking about her time at being in the house um, and we played a little bit of an extract of this um, in the live walk and talk but this is this is a this is a different part of her story um, but it hopefully if we're thinking of something called shifting photographic grounds uh, we'll see what her voice does for us and come come back to that discussion Bridget Diamond was in there with her too she was a widow man go killed at the limit of the thing I think a piece of shit or something and then she married again and then the I mind the Flemings being up in here the, the, that was a big room where there was still up an old fashioned kind of for taking food up for taking food up for the kitchen and uh, well there were families in there the Flemings I mind the in there and then my gut is in the nursery and what, what was that? There'd be maids who used to stay up there, wouldn't there? Maids rooms. I minded that I never really got to ken the folk that were in there and they never been long. But they were up near the roof, about there, I think. Mm. And there were somebody in here. Somebody in there, but I'm away again. I thought I knew the Glens were at that side, and Bridget Diamond at the other side, and two, and then there was the Flemings was three there, and then the, the there's a back, you see, there's a study comes into it, and no yeah. them, but I can't. Yeah. I can picture them, but I can't see through it. I think that's just a wonderful expression. I can picture them, but I kind of see through it because uh, I don't know if the audience could hear, but this is again, this is the, what you had is an audio where she's the, the, the postcard is enlarged. She's kind of tapping it. Um, there's a kind of thing where that expression is, it's in her mind, it's in her memory. It's a very clear picture of that house, which is now long, no longer there. It's, it's you know, rumored to be buried in amongst this industrial spoil heaps. And this is a place where multiple families who are, are you know, connected to the shale mining industries were living. And that thing about, is the, photog is the photograph, the postcard helping the memory or kind of frustrating it? And also all the key areas of, of where she lived in her family uh, are kind of round the back of the picture. So, uh, but it's also that kind of way that the voice is giving you a way, it, it, a voice is, is, is listening to that voice, what someone's saying and actually helping you relook and rethink about what's the significance of this house and then also the location it's in and also the story that it was, um, it is buried within the five sisters. Yeah, I thought that was fantastic. That phrase, it really resonated with me because, um, you know, photography and memory are so interlinked and yet they're so frustrating as well. So I know that you use kind of photo elicitation as kind of visual sociologists would call it as a method. But this is an excellent example of sort of where it can get you, but also where it can't get you. Yeah. And of course, with places that are gone, um, you know, they, they're moving into kind of myth and... Um, yeah, you can hear the sort of frustration where she's trying to evoke visually um, yeah. these things that are kind of there but not there. Yeah, it's really interesting. And I love the way that, um, you know, a postcard, um, a sort of topographical postcard, historic topographical postcard was the sort of departure point for all of those interesting things to take place. And you very generously share the space with your, um, you know, with your participants there. So her voice rings out in the gallery. It's, um, it's great to have that and she's another Bella so <laughs> yes yes yeah and, uh, yeah so so that's where yes you, you help and this is where it's obviously the kind of the the last series that 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 um 
that the viewer walks through. So there'll be different parts of the story that's that's triggered at different, uh, you know, when somebody walks in, then detects it. So she's not speaking to an empty space. It's the idea that somebody is speaking, knowing that there is somebody looking at this. Um, but and perhaps without that voice, it, it may be slightly difficult to kind of make sense of what the narrative is going on in the sequence. But it's obviously a shift from the postcard to to trying to depict something which is gone, um, and and uh, um, a, a, and also a kind of locate the part of the house that you can't see that was significant. Uh, so that's a. Uh, so in terms of, uh, and it was also a decision, that there are many voices within the exhibition, some of them are in text, some of them embedded yeah. within the image, um, but that's the one, the one sound voice. Um, and, and, and in terms of the many voices, when we come to, to the, this slide collection um, for, for traveling the archive, is, is that many of the voices are hoping that, um, that, that the viewers either get to see the exhibition, you know, virtually or physically, um, can also kind of, you know, locate the traveling the archive um, a kind of brochure where we had, uh, you know, multiple voices in this text that was kind of stitched together through collaborative working with um, uh, Caroline and Margaret from the Kailakan Local History Society. Um, yeah, it's great to talk about this. this is maybe the last thing that we focus on as one of your specific projects, yeah. how we already are speeding yeah. through the time. Yeah. Um, I'm really fascinated by slides. I've been writing a lot about slides right. recently. They're another sort of outmoded photographic mm. medium or photographic form, which has got a particular kind of material quality, especially in its, you know, its color and its illumination. I think this is a really visually striking part of the exhibition. So um, I'll let you talk about some of the, um, the processes that came to bring this work into being, but I particularly asked you to include this photograph yes. because um, as part of this community engagement photographic project that you've been involved in, um, you've been looking at these um, slide collections from the Isle of Skye and then in your display as part of the project, you either projected them or redisplayed them in sites um, pertinent to the image in the slide and this one really I thought was fantastic because you know we have these illuminated displays all around us in bus stops and um, here you've got a bunch of kids sort of waiting on a park bench I just thought the width of putting those things together with the slide form was really um, was really evocatively done right. <laughs> but tell, well, tell us more about the slide project in the Isle of Skye yeah, yes well um the 400 slides, uh, uh, which are which were all taken by uh, Miss Joan Wilcock, uh, and um, Kailak and Local History Society members were very definite that she was Miss Wilcock. That's how they remembered her, and she was an English woman who who who, who visited Kailak and over many decades. But, but the slides obviously represent a particular decade of the 1960s, um, and this is one of those things where. Um, well, you know, I don't know what photography meant to her personally. Um, she was, she was, she was remembered, and also has put there's pictures of her always kind of with a camera on, uh, you know, on her, on her, and the different kinds of cameras. But we don't really know whether she, um, you know, had artistic aspirations or, or what have you, or whether there was, it was always this kind of thing of of making um, making photographs when she went on holiday to the Isle of Skye and particularly to Kailakan. So what happened with looking at her slides um, in the Skye um, and uh, La Couch Archive Centre, um, and this was uh, the prompting of um, Atlas Arts, uh, uh, had already overheard somebody, you know, two Kailakan local history society members being very excited about seeing the printouts from the slides. Um, so that when I was looking at them, I was kind of thinking, oh yes, well, ha what would happen if you returned these from Portree, from the Archive Center actually to the location, but rather than sort of deciding there and then, oh yes, they must be projected and all the rest of it. It's like, you don't know that until you take it to the location and then you start talking to people and walking around kind of like a village, but looking at what were Miss Wilcox pillages, um, pictures then and now, but then it's starting to think about what there's a memory. This is again this thing about the memory walk that starts happening, and then and then thinking, how would you place those images back into a location in a particular way? 
So there's a way you're thinking of a site specific project um, and you know a lot of these things are very social events. Uh, so, the, so although the photographs that I eventually you know uh, made as documentation was after the social events and the, uh, 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 were kind of over. Um, so they become this kind of it, it slightly in this, uh, this this other space without you know without the food without the, the drink and without the walks um, and, and the kind of quite celebratory feel of walking around a village with these projections. Um, so there was some thought about what was going to go where, what images and why, um, and um, in response to those kind of conversations. Uh, and, and this is where this, this, this um, billboard image or bus stop image it, um, was illuminated at night and in the day that obviously the light is away and it's something that you can look through, it's semi-transparent in the, in, in the site. But when it came to thinking about um, how does this work then in, in the space of street level and re-looking at these works, which to a certain extent you could say, well, these are documentary in documentation of projections onto certain kind of sites and so forth. But then it, they, they eventually looking at that kind of, that, that's, that series and that idea of keeping, in, keeping some kind of reference to the slide projection, the original, you know, the, the, the original artifact, but it obviously has a sort of, contemporary you know, translation in some way so this is so this is why the the light box is trying to evoke that the idea that had the different ways that we might look at slides we might have looked at slides in the past and what's pertinent to those images now um, um, as well as kind of keeping some kind of faith with what the original project did on the site itself yeah so, it's fantastic it works really well so you've got a kind of loop of the slides showing as well as the yes. light boxes of yeah. how they looked when they were projected and illuminated on site. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah sorry. Go ahead. No, okay. So, so yes, and that loop of the whole archive, the whole 400 slides before anything is kind of edited down, is really important at street level because, it, it, you know, again, the kind of, the viewer can look and kind of sample some of it, but also they might be looking around the decorator's vitrine and look again to see there's another kind of, yeah, children playing, boats, um, portraits and sometimes there's a real sense that you can look at a portrait that uh, that Joan Wilcock took of of say Margaret's mother that they they knew they knew this one because she was a you know that she came she came there regularly she was a regular tourist but then her work then becomes a kind of portrait of a community that's that's experienced kind of change because of the building of the bridge and changes to the fishing industry and those kinds of things. Yeah, I like the way you combine the sort of raw and the cooked, if you like, so you can see what you were working with and then how you kind of transformed it. Um, and again, I think your strategies are often quite generous and quite humble because you're sort of showing your process and you're sharing your process because that's the sort of, it's absolutely yeah. intrinsic to how you work. Yeah. Um, let's talk yeah. finally about how you <laughs> yes. went about putting this exhibition together during a pandemic yeah. where the exhibition was actually installed um, and I was able to see it before you were. Yes. It was a very, very <laughs> weird set of um, arrangements for yeah. an artist to not be there in person, especially one who worked with material yeah. and space to not yes. to go into the gallery. <laughs> yes. Well, I think um, what I've just sort of kind of running through now is that sense of um, if, if we want to be serious about process, you have to talk about, it, you know, how, how, how does an artist or photographer work and a gallery talk through all the logistics of an extremely challenging time where the most important thing is people being safe and well and healthy. And at the same time, there's a challenge and it's obviously been on off and there'll be people who will be, you know, part of our audience that are also been going through this, <laughs> this on off thing with all different kinds of walks of life, but with exhibitions, some being already opened and then closed and then opened and closed. And this one was where um, uh, it was how to install it in, in, in a safe way. And in fact, it was really interesting how we came about it. So I'm showing, what I've sort of shown through is that sending the visuals that I would have sent through to, um, to, to, to street level, um, you know, based on the, the, the floor plans, I probably had a kind of couple of days access between September and November last year in between these, but obviously we would have been talking about this a long time because it was supposed to happen last summer. And then there was the big, 
um, the big delay, uh, but it's also the it's just to do with the interruption with your thought processes as well as production because labs were you know were closed at the uh, you know for the first lockdown, and then it was like moving forward and thinking. I I had a sense that last September I thought well this show might get installed without me being there and how would we do this then then started to really think about how do you work to some kind of scale working out how the size of the images but then trying to give something visual so that you know um, that, that Malcolm and Bill of street level but also Eastern Exhibition who installed some of this obviously with social distancing in mind with from the street level viewpoint. So trying to put that these visual layouts um, and then um, not being there and, and then the technical team coming in, installing it and sending a picture or sending a, a you know, WhatsApp video or phoning and us having a video com you know, conversation. And that's how we did it. <laughs> um, and, and it was also really feeling like the, the street, you know, the street level, they've had more, you know, they've had more shows than I have. Up, and I would try that sense of trust and thinking, well, Actually, if they think it's not going to look very good or this needs to be tweaked or if there's too many captions, we had a conversation about too many captions here, um, then to kind of go away and think about that and to send the pictures back and then, you know, uh, uh, of kind of like, um, this is obviously a sketch of the vitrine that we, when we looked at a detail of earlier and, um, and just thinking, yes, I've sent all, because I sent, sometimes I sent too much information and, and it wasn't always intended to be you know literally taken and, and we'd have this dialogue saying actually we need to move the decorators to the bigger vitrine um, and uh, and also then I'd think oh yes we don't need that we just don't need all that information we don't need all that text in there but here are the you know what are the key key credits um, and things like that so there was a really uh, important dialogue that that, that went on and it was lot there was lots of leaps of faith I felt and but also that kind of element of trust but also the whole thing about because as artists and photographer you're used to kind of going around laying things out doing you know doing a final bit of tweaking and you just have to think oh how is this going to be done now without that and just finding a way a way through um, and so that that you can see the vitrine now as we kind of pull back and kind of come to the end of our kind of in conversation section that how the the vitrine was put together um yes and there's that contrast to how it was a sighted work to then this kind of like museum display that you were talking about but also at the same time um street level really thinking about we had lots of discussions about the physical access to the show it was going could be extremely limited so the importance of the online and then the idea of the 3D show. That, so the way that the different, you know, that people could come and access the work without fit necessarily physically being there. I mean, obviously it's brilliant, Bella, that you've seen the show and had that physical experience. Cause I think that there is that, you, there is that dimension that you can't take away from, but it's also, you know, thinking about collaborators, different family members, friends, who even now are still feeling a bit unsure about whether they can feel confident about traveling around and, and all that kind of thing. And it's been very interesting just to see other artists and photographers and curators, you know, um, impressions being one gallery, you know, but about, uh, about how can you kind of widen that access even if people can't travel to see works. So that's how, um, that's how you can see how we've come to, um, come to eventually have a physical show that people can access in different ways and for us to have this conversation. So I think right. that's kind of, hopefully that's kind of. <laughs> yeah, more shifting of photographic rounds. You're shifting yes. to social yeah. distance yeah. photographic yeah. rounds yeah. and three-dimensional yeah. walkthrough photographic rounds. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So shall I stop sharing the screen and we can Hi. Hi there. Thank you both for that. That was really great. Um, and it's a little bit strange because obviously we're in this closed Zoom. So I'll just feed you back a few of the, the comments that have been coming through because it's nice to know. <laughs> it's nice to know you're not on your own. Alicia Bruce from Portobello, who you mentioned, she says hi. Um, <laughs> Lives in the home of from the decorator kilns and misses seeing that image on her way to Lizzle every morning. Um, she 
she said something there. She had another comment as well. She loves the notion of the memory walk and how this is integral to so much of your practice, Nikki. Um, your work is always full of warmth and respect. No, oh, thank you. That's nice. Um, Paul Curry also says it's really lovely to see the, the subjects beside the original photograph. Um, Margaret Drysdale. Oh, I think, I think involved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really interesting to have seen how all the women were creating the designs on the pottery and how they marked them. Um, I don't think you mentioned that quite in the in the talk there, but mm. there's really nice detail in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why I just sort of showed very quickly the pot because every, every this is a motif, but it, it looks different to who the painter is. Um, so yeah, there's a part two to that project. So I'm looking forward to getting that started again. Um, Janie, Janie Bland from Sterling Photo Festival. So I visited your exhibition today with my friend um, Nadia Snyder. Oh, great. I was left feeling quite nostalgic. Familiar places, much changed, including Fox Bar. Mm. I've taken a few days away. I'm taking a few days away next week to visit Kalachen. So we'll be looking out for some of these charming views. Thank you so much. Um, but that's an interesting point about nostalgia and that is something that you, you've you both already kind of talked a little bit about in the exhibition. Um, mini graph and Nikki you say um, how nostalgia plays a role in looking back but it's it's not all about sweetness uh, mm. it can have bite so I wonder if you could just say say a little bit more about that because yeah nos nostalgia is a big term for lots of things yeah yeah um, yes, this is something that, yeah, Bella and I probably do talk about quite a lot and they had to kind of chop it down to be quite a succinct thing <laughs> at the end of the mini graph. But um, I've, I've, I mean, I've obviously been really aware and had to work with it and take it really quite seriously, this, this nostalgic element. Um, I'm not um, dismissive of it, you know, in terms of, you know, there is that kind of meaning to it that it's a you know sentimental and um, uh, and a very negative thing, but it is dealing with certain kinds of loss, um, certain uh, loss. Um, sometimes, um, yeah, in the dictionary de definition, it's about the Greek origins about loss of home. So uh, and as and so the and, and other other people have kind of looked at that term. A much more sort of thought about it in terms of how we've had sort of major shifts you know disappearing as of um if you like the eastern bloc or communism and a different kind of sense of what the nostalgia means that comes out of those kinds of uh, um of those kinds of experiences uh but but it's always like trying to be aware that it's there not deny it but how do you hold it in a certain kind of tension a certain kind of place so that uh, it, it doesn't threaten to overwhelm um, an image, uh, but it's it's not denying it, but it's trying to hold it hold it in a particular way. So I suppose there's a risk sometimes that you might end up um, where you might end up distancing people a little bit too much from that kind of emotional charge, uh, and that's kind of one of the areas that I'm I'm always kind of grappling with. Um, so it, it, yeah, it's how to have that kind of a productive tension between nostalgia between the, you know sometimes that is you know that kind of past but also what's happening in the present um and, and what's kind of almost in, in the in between um so i don't know if that explains a little bit more about the the, the thinking around or feeling around the, the, the nostalgia and sometimes i go to the to certain kinds of landscape you feel that so there's like this presence there and it's slightly irrational but there is something there um, and, it, and one of the um, collaborators in Beneath the Surface Hidden Place, Anne, had a great expression about the lost villages in, in, um, in East Ayrshire. She said, oh, you could go walking there. And she said, you could feel the ghosts. And then she said, oh, but they're very friendly. You know? So I kind of like that idea that, yeah, that you, could, you, 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 you have these kinds of senses, these kinds of haunting, some of it's slightly irrational, some of it maybe a little bit sentimental, but it's... It, it, 
it's it is held in in attention with whether something is really disappearing it's the last remnants of something that's crumbling away um, that people are holding it in memory and they may be you know in their 70s and 80s that kind of thing and and thinking oh it's not relevant now um, that's all gone but on the other hand it's uh it's still a story that's that that, that has a presence so therefore it's worth kind of visualizing in some way yeah absolutely um okay i'm gonna to to do a little bit of scrolling back here because there's got a few questions just come through um so christina mcbride um whilst each project is a very different set of concerns do you see any connections or threads which run through your practice Yes, I think, uh, hi Christina, thanks for that. I mean, I think it, that was kind of a really, one of the big things I had to really think about when uh, Street Level were, were talking to me about a solo show of these projects that had very particular locations and very particular, you know, people attached to them, was what were the threads and how would, would the show hang together, you know, by bringing it into a gallery and, and thinking of these particular projects how would they work in the gallery, not only in terms of that sense of authenticity to how they originally cited, but how, how would they speak to each other? And I think that's, um, so I do think there's that ongoing, ongoing, you can see the threads of, yes, there's questions of different kinds of personal and collective memory, um, certain kinds of social histories, uh, changes to place, which is which has obviously become a big, a big thing and has many dimensions to that. Um, uh, that are not you know fully covered in the show and are not fully. But those changes of place and what is lost when you have a change, and what and what kind of stubbornly sticks there <laughs> in in some way. So I think that's the thread that goes through all of those all of the projects. Um, and I think that one of the things about COVID-19 and the galleries having to have a particular flow system that 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 actually turned out to be a benefit for me um I don't know if this answers Christina's question but you could start in beneath the surface hidden place and then you end up with heritage site um but still with that hopefully with that feeling that you've got different you're meeting different voices on the way in different places but there are these reoccurring themes about um uh, yeah, about that kind of collective and personal memory and photography being tied up in different ways in it. Yeah. Frank McElhinney, hello Frank, says, um, your approach seems very consistent over time, um, but have there been any learnings that have caused you to shift direction? Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good question. Um, and also it's, it's important to acknowledge when you don't have projects that work, and they and and they fail and they don't go anywhere because uh, that's part of the process as well and you learn from those i mean they might they might not make it to a, <laughs> a kind of body of work on the wall but that's why um in one of the vitrines there is the um uh, uh is there is one there's one essay uh, which is a, a cast uh, from showroom to you know from showroom to car uh, from casino to um showroom and there's picture two pictures of the kind of uh, one is the women who are young women who are like Miss Coldfield of various um, parts of Scotland, um, and a bunch of uh, they you know have looked like cowboys, but they're kind of miners in their social club um, um, with their sort of um, uh, kind of shooting shooting things that, that they had, but with um, I can't remember what it's called. You know the the smell. You know where you have kind of like fake bullets and they use that kind of. Um, kind of thing and, and that was about a project that never happened that never that I really wish would have happened but it didn't go anywhere so going back to Frank's question there is that thing about sometimes you just have to shelve something and think that you just, it just doesn't get a, a, a momentum but every every project that has a starting point with a particular picture it, it's not you can't say to the, to a group of people this this outcome is going to look like this project that I've just finished because it, that's that may not be relevant or pertinent or the a meaningful visual solution. So you're learning from these projects all the time. Yeah. Um, Jan McTaggart 
Hi, Jen. <laughs> Says the sense of nostalgia was overwhelming at the time for me, but Nikki's incredible ability to handle that sensitivity meant that the work isn't saccharine. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, Jan, you know how important you are to, to me in that work and, and, and beyond. And um, Alicia said, Alicia Bruce is coming back saying, um, how do the collaborators from the original images feel becoming art historical icons? Yeah, well, this is where Ruth's, uh, Ruth McDougall's expression, we are social history is so interesting because that whole thing of when she said, looking at going back, Bella, going back to your point about the slides, uh, that, that there'd be lots of depictions of, of, of people, uh, you know, as children who are now, you know, uh, you know, obviously kind of um, uh, older, but that kind of, but also different kinds of childhood that you're looking back or back on. And um, so, 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 I think, and this is where uh, it's good that Jan's here as well, is that 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 it's one thing about when you're in a kind of picture like J John Yeoman was with his brother and, and, and you're looking at that and you're thinking, that's me, that's me as a child and this is my setting and this is, you know, all your family context. And it's another thing when it's then brought into the public domain in a different way and it retains those things, but it also has something else. And also you don't really know have somebody not connected to you personally, or, or, you know, or the kind of narrative of the picture, what, what sense they're making of it. Um, so, yeah, so I think there's, um, that there's, there's always a mixture of feelings to, uh, about what people think about being brought into the public domain, but that's also why you have to have quite a close dialogue. So that if, if people are really not comfortable with that, then, then that's it. They shouldn't, you know, if, if they just want to be there having the social cup of tea with talking about photographs, that's fine. Uh, and then others will think there's a point, there's a point to that. And sometimes they think it's very playful and, um, you know, kind of humorous, you know, the idea of standing next to yourself now and then kind of thing in a, in a projection. And for other people, it's, um, it, it, it's showing something that they think this is a story that is, needs to be told. Yeah, I mean, there's loads more um, I'd like to ask you about that <laughs> and kind of talk through that, you know, the, a lot of those dynamics between uh, what happens in, in the kind of collaborative practice at a local level and then how, what filters through to become public locally, then perhaps what becomes off site and, and then what gets recorded in a catalogue, for example. Um, yeah. But on that note, yes. we are going to be having another conversation on yeah. the 5th of June uh, <laughs> of uh, the kind of final event, um, online event around your uh, exhibition. And that's going to be with um, Alicia Farnham, who's another artist, uh, myself, Nikki, yes. and we've got Catherine McPhee, the archivist from Sky, and also Annie Lydon who's the chief curator at the National Galleries in Edinburgh. Yeah. Um, so everybody date for your online diaries. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And apologies, I feel like, you know, this could have gone on. There was a lot that hasn't been unpacked yet, really. And um, obviously you two have a, a really good synergy between your, your different practices and thought processes. I've got one final question is just the, how did you meet? <laughs> I think it was through our colleague, our friend, Lara Perry, who yes. might even be here in the audience. Um, when I was um, doing my PhD, I think, or maybe it's even my MA, you and Lara were running a project called Unknown Sitter. Yes, yes. Which was about different methodologies and approaches for thinking about how to work with paintings where you don't know who the sitter is or found photographs. And I was really interested in found photographs and I somehow got invited via Lara to take part in that project. Yeah. This was 2006, I think, oh, 2007. Yeah, yeah. But we didn't actually meet until, uh, I think we met at a photography conference maybe a few years after that. Yeah. And then we just met through, you know, photography conferences, interest in family photography. Yeah. Um, 
I think that's how I remember it. Yes, yes. You wrote about a photograph of an unknown woman polyphoto. You're it? funny enough, it's yeah. in the Bradford <laughs> yes. collection, and here yeah. I am in <laughs> Shelby yeah. in Bradford, back in that collection. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a polyphoto of multiple images yeah. of an unknown woman, and I happened to have a polyphoto. It was a sort of early um, portrait, automatic portrait technology, like a photo booth. I had polyphotos of my parents when they were engaged, so I wrote about it from a very personal perspective about my family history. Yeah, it was really, really good. As ever. <laughs> Always a pleasure to talk to you, Nikki. Thank you for Bella. having me today. Yeah, I thought. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to I thought you hearing you talk about a particular body of work and what we are social history means to you. I'm just chairing the next event, which I'm delighted with my four contributors who have really meant something to me on the way. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay. Well, thank you very much uh, for this fascinating conversation this evening. Thanks to everybody at home who or online that's joined us. Apologies again for the slight disruption at the start and hopefully see you again next week.